All right, this is Harry Baird, and he actually lives quite close to me. Uh, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, uh, but about six weeks ago, uh, I lent him my auto level, and really I only wanted to show him uh, the angle to the horizon and to demonstrate that it does not rise to eye level. Uh, so we set up the auto level in his lounge room, uh, leveled it properly, and then pointed it at the horizon uh, along with this uh, tower that features in most of his videos. All right, so through the eyepiece of the auto level, you'll see these uh, marks, which are called stadia marks, uh, and there is 10 milliradians between the top and the bottom. Uh, so therefore five milliradians between the crosshairs and the bottom. Uh, the distance between the crosshairs and the horizon was around 4.56 milliradians, uh, and that is equal to 0 0.261 degrees. Uh, now on a globe, we can make a prediction. Uh, Harry is at 76 meters above sea level. Uh, so using standard refraction uh, and throwing that into Metabunk Curve Calculator, uh, you get a prediction on the globe model of 0 0.259 degrees, uh, which is pretty close to where we actually measured it. Uh, and we're off by about 0 0.002 degrees. That's pretty good, right? All right, but how accurate is the auto level? Uh, there's actually a method uh, called the two peg test to calibrate your auto level. Uh, and I carried that out today after Harry returned the auto level yesterday. All right, so here we are on a, uh, a surface that does not have to be flat. Uh, so these points here at the bottom can be different heights, uh, different elevations. All that matters in this particular setup is that the auto level is exactly in the middle or as close as possible to the middle. Uh, so basically you set it up, uh, make sure it's level, point it across to one of the rods, uh, take a measurement, and then turn it around and point it to the other side. Uh, so in this particular case, this one measured 1200 millimeters, and this side measured 1000 millimeters. So the difference is 200 millimeters. Now, the important thing is that it does not matter at this stage if your auto level is properly calibrated. Uh, it could be pointing down, uh, in which case this one might read 900 millimeters and this side might read 700 millimeters. Again, the difference will be 200 millimeters. Because we are in the middle, uh, these triangles are called similar triangles uh, and therefore the measurements or the difference in the measurements will be the same uh, at 200 millimeters. So let's look at the other way. Maybe your auto level is pointing up uh, and in that case, you'll get a measurement over here of say 1500 millimeters uh, and in the other direction, a measurement of 1300 millimeters. Uh, but again, the difference is 200 millimeters, regardless of whether your auto level is accurate or not. All right, so I found a good spot to calibrate my auto level. Uh, these are some netball courts near my place. Uh, and they're quite good because they have a known length of 30.5 meters. They're already marked uh, with a center spot. So all I did uh, was place a little yellow ruler at one end on the goalposts uh, and a blue ruler at the other end. All right, so here I am at the, at the uh, netball courts. You can't quite see the yellow ruler there, uh, but it is there. All right, and then you take a measurement to the yellow ruler and that came out at about 80 millimeters. And then you take a measurement to the other ruler at the other end and that came out at 188.5 millimeters. All right, so remembering these are in the middle, the auto level is in the middle of the netball court. Uh, so the difference of 108.5 millimeters is correct, regardless of whether your auto level is properly calibrated. All right, so now what to do is to move your auto level closer to one end. Uh, so I moved it to the, uh, the goal area at the blue end, uh, which according to specifications is 4.9 meters out from the goalposts, uh, which makes this distance 25.6 meters. And then you do the same two shots again to the yellow and the blue. All right, so there I am pointing at the blue one. Uh, all right, so here are the two measurements. So in this case, uh, pointing back towards the yellow ruler, I got a measurement of about 57.5 millimeters uh, and pointing back to the blue ruler, which was much closer, uh, I got a measurement of 168 millimeters. 
So the difference is not 108.5 millimeters, it is now 110.5 millimeters. So we're off by two millimeters. All right, so there is a two millimeter error in the instrument. Okay, so this diagram shows the, the second pair of shots where we're looking at the yellow ruler from a distance uh, and we're quite close to the blue ruler. Now, what we need to work out is this angle in here. And it could be above or below eye level, but it must satisfy these two conditions. So remember that at the start, we measured uh, when the, the uh, auto level was in the middle, uh, we measured a difference between the yellow and the blue of 108.5 millimeters. Uh, and that reading is correct, regardless of whether the auto level is properly calibrated. But when we moved the auto level, we saw an apparent level uh, that showed a difference of 110.5 millimeters. All right, so we need to work out what the required angle is to make sense of those two conditions. And it works out that the, the auto level is off by 0 0.0055 degrees. Uh, so you can see uh, that it will be off by half a millimeter at this end. Uh, and off by two and a half millimeters at this end. And the difference in those is the two millimeters that we are missing. All right, so this means that my auto level is pointing down uh, and the true level is actually above the crosshairs uh, by this amount. So 0 0.0055 degrees, which is roughly uh, 20 arc seconds. All right, but how can we use the auto level to show curvature? All right. We do reciprocal shots. Okay, so this is what it would look like on a flat plane. Uh, we set up our auto level, do a long shot over to some point in the distance. Uh, we then go to where that shot landed and shoot back towards our uh, first location. On a flat plane and a perfectly level uh, auto level, those should coincide. So you should point straight back down the lens of your auto level from the first shot on a flat plane. However, on a globe, uh, when you set up your auto level to do the first shot, you will reach some point over here. You'll then go over to that point and shoot back towards your first shot. But on a globe, uh, there is obviously some drop due to curvature. So what will happen is that you will overshoot your target. You will aim high, or the crosshairs will be higher uh, than your first shot. And it will be equal uh, to double the drop uh, for each shot. All right, so what I tried to do today is go over to North Head uh, in Sydney uh, and point back roughly to Harry's house. Uh, so here's my coordinates here, and here I was at the corner of this little viewing platform. Uh, there is another viewing platform just over here, which is a couple of meters lower, uh, which will come in handy when you see the footage later. But pointing back uh, towards the west, towards Harry's place. All right, and here we are. So this is a little video uh, showing what I saw on the way back. So, here's a little close up. So auto level said that level was around about here. So just below this red roof line uh, and around about this front bumper of the car. Uh, so I had to drive quite quickly to try and get around to there uh, before these cars moved. Uh, I failed, <laughs> that car had already moved. Uh, so here is a rough approximation but I also had the, the roof line to work against as well. And I tried my best to underestimate or under uh, shoot my level because that uh, is generous to the flat earth. All right, so there I am. So I'm roughly in line with that roof line as well as the front bumper of the car. Uh, so I am where I, uh, where I shot to from North Head. All right, but let's uh, work out some predictions for what we should see when we point the auto level back towards the first shot All right, so remember that the auto level actually points down. It's not perfectly calibrated uh, and points down by 0 0.0055 degrees 
uh, over that distance of around about five kilometers. Uh, that comes out to be 0 0.47 meters. Uh, and obviously over both shot, shots, you need to double that to 0 0.94 meters. So on a flat earth, uh, we should see the crosshairs about one meter below the first shot. And that's composed entirely of the error uh, in the calibration. Uh, however, on a globe, there is 1.61 meters of refracted drop, which you can get from the Metabunk curve calculator. Uh, so over both shots, forwards and backwards, uh, you need to double that to 3.22 meters uh, and then incorporate the same error that the uh, auto level has of 0 0.94 meters, bringing us down to about 2.3 meters uh, above the crosshairs. Uh, oh, sorry, above the, the first shot. That's where the crosshairs should be. All right, so let's have a look at the actual video. Oh, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So there's the, the lower observation deck, and there's the high one where I took the first shot from. Uh, so here is the first shot location just above the railing. Uh, here is some guy here standing here just for scale and here are the crosshairs. Uh, so again, on a flat earth, the prediction was that the crosshairs would be 0 0.9 meters below the first shot. So somewhere down here uh, and on a globe, the crosshairs should be 2.3 meters above the first shot, somewhere up near where the crosshairs actually are. The end. <laughs>